at forward. The 6'3 sophomore from Greenville, Tennessee, number 34, Marty Story. And forward, the six foot four sophomore from Castlewood, Virginia, number 24, Calvin Talford. And center, 6'11 junior from Charleston, West Virginia, number 11, Greg Dennis. At guard, the 6'1 junior from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, number 12, the Major Gear. And at guard, a 5'7 junior from Culpeper, Virginia, number 22, Keith, Mr. Jimmy. The Bucks coached by Les Robinson, our officials, Ted Valentine, James Owens, and Ed Chambers. There you see the officials for tonight's ball game, most important in the Southern Conference. And we'll be back at the Mini Dome at East Tennessee with the opening tip-off after this. East Tennessee in the home white, Marshall in the traveling green, Roland and Greg Dennis, jump center, and the Buccaneers control. Number 22, Keith Jennings, the playmaker, one of the best assist men, Kenny, in the country. 9.3 assists. He's the guy that triggers the attack, whether it goes to gear, outside, or Dennis underneath. Thundering Hurt sets up in a zone to try to offset the outside shooting of the Buccaneers. Inside, Greg Dennis gets the bucket. Greg Dennis, 6'11", junior from Charleston, West Virginia. His folks looking in tonight, unable to make the trip down here. Talked to Greg briefly before the ball game. Wanted to uh, send his regards, tell them hello. Have some debris on the floor thrown from the crowd. They're now being warned. Another such incident, a technical foul will be assessed against the Buccaneers. We don't have an attendance figure yet, but we're told this is the largest crowd ever to watch a basketball game here in the Memorial Center, the home of the Buccaneers. Call it the Dome of Doom. Pattern after the mini dome at Idaho State University where Marshall played Northeast Louisiana a couple of years ago for the Division I AA football championship. High post, that's Roland. He goes to Peterson, who's in the opening lineup. Back to Peterson. And Jeff Peterson, the freshman, misses Andre Cunningham with the score and the tied at one. I'm told the Marshall basketball team had a meeting of about one hour yesterday before departing Huffington for Johnson City, Tennessee. Nobody will say what transpired. There's a three-pointer by Mr. Jennings. Nevertheless, Mo Sanders, who has started every game so far this season, not in the opening lineup, replaced by the freshman Jeff Peterson. This is Cunningham. East Tennessee, a dog at man-to-man defense. John Tapp bangs home a three-pointer for the Thundering Herd. Well, it started off very similar to the game in Huntington. There's another one. This one by Marty Story. Both these clubs shooting very well at the outset. Scott Williams. He misses. Greg Dennis clears the boards, and the Buccaneers are on the move with Mr. Jennings controlling. Tried an alley hoop, didn't work out. Cunningham rebounds for the Thundering Herd. 22 is John Tapp. He has been guarded by Major Gear. Tapp rolls it in. Marshall's come out in a 3-2 zone, extending the top of the zone, trying to shut down on East Tennessee State's outside shooting. What that does, of course, is make it a little bit more vulnerable underneath. East Tennessee State is a team with an inside-outside attack. The big man, Greg Dennis, he'll get loose a lot in a defense where it's a 3-2. Be able to drive to the hole and shoot the short seven-footer. Dennis missed the shot. The herd rebound. John Tapp losing it. Mr. Jennings. Showtime. East Tennessee leads 9-7. to seven. We have played less than three minutes. 
Dane Altman wanted this game to stay in the 70s and 80s. If it gets up any higher, he said the Thundering Herd very vulnerable to defeat. This tempo does not suit his liking. Marshall losing at home to the Buccaneers, 99-88, back on January 29th. And we have our first foul of the game. It's going to be on Marty Story, I believe, reaching in. The 6'3 sophomore from Greenville, Tennessee, went for the ball as Omar Rowan posted up in the middle of the block, slapped him across the arm. John Taft will trigger for the thumping herd. He finally gets rid of it almost and is intercepted. And a wide open layup missed by Marty Story. Oh, merciful heavens. <laughs> How did he do that? There's John Taft. And Taft knocks down another three-pointer. Since coming back from his leg injury, John Taft has been incredible, averaging somewhere around the 29-point range. He's averaging about 22 for the year, but he had a series of games where he just didn't play very well because of the leg injury. Marshall 10, East Tennessee State 9. Rebound battled for and out of bounds. It will belong to the Buccaneers. First meeting between these two teams, Omar Rowland, not a particularly strong force on the boards, only four rebounds. Altman needs to get better production out of his big man in order to control some of the stuff that's coming off on missed shots. East Tennessee out-rebounded Marshall by three in that first game, 27-24. Not a lot of rebounds because of such excellent shooting by both clubs. <laughs> not a lot of missed shots. Working against the Thundering Herd zone, the Buccaneers. There's a, the, there's a good look at the 3-2 as they set out out front. Williams at the key. Calvin Talford hits the three-pointer. He had 27 points in the first meeting between these two ball clubs. Averages 17 a game. East Tennessee stayed ahead at 11 to 10. We have a whistle and a foul is on John Tapp. Called by Ed Chambers. Tapp didn't like it, and I thought Chambers going to hit him with a tee. He gave him that look. John Taft had some words. Dana Altman now talking to Chambers. So it's a we bad have, call. We have a timeout on the floor. 1540 to go in the first half. East Tennessee leading 11 to 10. Here's a look at that fast break. John Taft loses the ball. Keith Jennings comes up with it. Greg Dennis on the other end playing for the fans here in Johnson City and for mom and dad back home in Charleston, West Virginia. The reverse slam up and down. Back to live action. The Buccaneers with the ball and a one-point lead. Marshall man for man defensively now and Dennis over Roland. It will not go and out of there with it is Andre Cunningham. Mo Sanders, number 42, in the ballgame now for the Thundering Herd, replacing Jeff Peterson. The Buccaneers in a man-to-man -man defense, as opposed to Marshall's zone. Out of bounds, and it will belong to the Thundering Herd. On Monday night, Marshall will be at Appalachian State. Thundering Herd 9-3 and three in the Southern Conference, East Tennessee State. 10 and 2. The Buccaneers win tonight. They win the regular season championship and top seed in the tournament, which begins next week down in Asheville. Sanders underneath puts it up. It won't go. Roland misses the shot. Roland again. Again, it won't go. Thundering Hurt had three chances, could not get it down, and finally it goes in. Omar Roland should jump up and stuff that ball at 6-11 instead of trying to let in. Mo Sanders finally swept the offensive boards. Dennis wanted an offensive foul. The ref said no dice, and Sanders gets the layup. So Sanders just into the lineup, scores for the first time. Marshall comes out of there with it, and the person now is John Taft. Taft takes the three-pointer, and it's off the mark. Rebound, Sanders, and he scores again. So Mo Sanders in the lineup less than a minute has made his presence felt. 
Marshall on top by three. Mr. Jennings drives, and we have a whistle. Keith is fouled in there. Don't turn your back on Mr. Jennings, but when you talk about Mo Sanders coming out of being a force, when a player is benched at the beginning of the game for whatever reasons, it can have two effects. One, he can come out in a funk, then look sorry for himself and not perform very well. Or two, he can fire him up, he can come out and have a pretty good start, and usually leads to a good game. Alvin West, the 6'3 junior from Hadlock, North Carolina, checks in for the Buccaneers. He's number 10. At the free throw line is Keith Jennings, Mr. Jennings, an 86% free throw shooter. Buccaneers excellent from the free throw line against Marshall up in Huntington on January 29th, hitting 26 of 29 foul shots. Keith Jennings hits both of them. He has five points, and Marshall now leads by one at 14-13. The first game very close until about seven minutes to go when the Buccaneers broke it open. Cunningham and a whistle. He is fouled. This is going to be on uh, Major, Major Gear. Gear, I believe. First on Gear, second team foul against the Buccaneers. Ted Valentine from across the court calls the foul on Gear as he slapped Cunningham across the arm, shooting the J. Ted Valentine. One of the real good officials in the country, a native West Virginia from up around the Wheeling area. Andre misses his free throw. Valentine went to college at Glenville State. Cunningham missed them both. Only a 65% free throw shooter. Major Gear moving on rolling, and he lays it in. Nice offensive play by the Major, the junior from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And it's a 15-14 lead for the Buccaneers. This is Sanders, number 42. Cunningham inside, Roland and Omar goes up over Greg Dennis and scores. That's what Dana Altman wants to do. He says if the score is in the 90s or 100s or 80s, Roland, Roland is not in the game enough. Roland got a block, that's his 91st of the year. 93 is the Southern Conference mark set by George Singleton of Furman about 10 years ago. Wild and Woolley underneath, and out of there with it come the Buccaneers running. Alvin West has the ball stolen by Harold Simmons, who's in the Marshall lineup now, number 10, and he loses it right back, picked by Calvin Townford. The bottom of the early turnovers here. Keith Jennings. Bad shot, bad shot. He forced it up in a lot of heavy traffic. A 5'7", a fellow in there, got 6'11", Omar Roland, a little bit over match. John Tapp won't go. Roland rebounds and drops it in. Both teams playing a little out of control right now. But then again, that's East Tennessee State's style of play. They like to push it up and down. Oh, a beautiful alley-oop to Calvin Talford. Keith Jennings with a marvelous pass, and Talford, only 6'4", went up and slammed it home. 18-17, Marshall by one. Simmons, the freshman out of Houston, Texas, has the ball go out of bounds off Mo Sanders. It will belong to the Buccaneers, and Anthony Biggle checks into the Marshall lineup, number 24. Greg Dennis signaled to Les Robinson, he needs a breather with this pace. He goes down. It's tough on the big fellas moving this quickly up and down the floor. Another big fella replaces him, Chad Keller, the 6'8 senior from Lenore, North Carolina. Now, Keller had a splendid game against Marshall coming off the bench. He's had nine rebounds in that game to lead all rebounders and help the Buccaneers break it open. No one else for East Tennessee State more than three rebounds in that game. Harold Simmons picks off this carom, and it's tapped into the attacking court. All the way, John Tapp scores up over Keller. 10 points, John Tapp. Marshall leading by three at 20 to 17. This is Kelly from Lenore, North Carolina. Mr. Jennings, a three-pointer. And we're tied at 20 with 11.20 to go in the first half. At this rate, both teams will be around 90. Underneath the foul is against East Tennessee State. It's on Calvin Talford. Arguably the best athlete in the Southern Conference. Mo Sanders slipped by him. Talford called for the reaching foul. Now we'll be back here at the Mini Dome right after you listen to this. 
Omar Rowland has been doing this all season for the Thundering Herd. Alvin West driving the baseline, and the big O comes from nowhere and slaps it away. Omar Rowland closing in on a couple of milestones. He needs just three block shots to set a new Southern Conference season record of 94, and the same number will land him the Marshall career record. He'll pass Charlie Slack. Marshall with the ball, brings it in to Bigel, number 24, the new man in the lineup. We have a foul, a blocking foul against the Buccaneers. It's going to be on Major Gear, and that will be his second. Fourth team foul against the Buccaneers. Marshall's been called for only two. So John Tapp will bring it in from the baseline. East Tennessee looking to wrap up the regular season Southern Conference Championship. Jeff Peterson back in the game. This is Simmons with the shot, and he misses. Buccaneers haul it down. Number 32 in there is Michael Woods, a junior. Rebound is down by Bigel. And Tapp shoves it up floor. John goes all the way. He does not get it to fall, but he is fouled. So John Tapp, who is excellent at penetrating and driving. Had a chance at a 19-footer. Passed it up. Drove into the lane. Could have shot a 14-footer. Saw another open avenue. Drove to the hole and got the foul. Michael Woods charged with that foul. Now Greg Dennis checking back into the lineup for the Buccaneers of Les Robinson. Fine head coach here at East Tennessee State. His father, Enki Robinson, back in uh, St. Albans, West Virginia, recuperating from a recent illness. Les says he's getting along real fine. We know that uh, he's looking in tonight and, of course, rooting for the Bucks. Excellent, uh, just a splendid gentleman. Wishing well a very speedy recovery. John Tapp missed the second one, but Bigel rebounds. He can't get the shot away. Back to Tapp, and he missed the three-pointer, and Bigel gets it again. Tapp leading the Southern Conference in scoring at 23 points a game. Of course, that takes into account that injury period when he wasn't scoring very well. Pass inside to Sanders, and he hands it off to Peterson. Jeff can't get it to go, goes up again, and we have a whistle. Going to call goaltending. Goaltending on the Buccaneers, so give Peterson the basket. Goaltending on Greg Dennis. Expanding on the Taft situation, he's averaging 28 points a game since coming back 100%. Omar Rowland and Scott Williams back into the Marshall lineup. We have 10-20 to go in the first half. 23-20, Thundering Herd on top. Major Mr. Jennings with that shot and will not roll and we have a jump ball. The possession belongs to Marshall. Southern Conference Tournament starts next Friday down in Asheville, North Carolina. And all the Marshall games will be seen on WSAZ Television 3, Huntington, Charleston. And all the Buccaneer games will be seen here in the Tri-Cities area on WJHL in Johnson City. Two top teams in the conference doing battle here tonight. Roland has the ball batted away and picked off by the Buccaneers. They double teamed the big guy. Can't stand around and hold the ball. You've got to get rid of it. Pass goes right past Calvin Talford out of bounds. So Marshall gets it on a turnover. Andre Cunningham back into the Marshall lineup. And Andre, uh, rather, uh, Beagle goes over and sits down. Anthony Beagle. Harold Simmons now working the point guard. And John Taft is on the bench. He's taking the breather. A fast baseball game. Roland down low. And a foul is called against Roland for backing in and using the elbow, says Ted Valentine. So Roland picks up his first foul. That's the third team foul against the Thundering Herd. East Tennessee State is going with an interesting defensive matchup from the man-to-man. -man. It's Greg Dennis taking on Mo Sanders. Meanwhile, Chad Keller has drawn Omar Rowland. So you would, if you to look at Dennis and Rowland, you'd think they'd be perfect for each other, but Les Robinson doesn't agree. Buckingham is working without Mr. Jennings, who has uh, taken a breather on the bench, getting ready to check back in. West 
Goes inside to Keller, batted by Rowland, picked up by Cunningham. Back to Rowland, but batted away Good by hustle. Keller, out of bounds. Good hustle, right you are. Andre Cunningham could have elected to go with a lob pass. However, he did not see Keller charging down the floor. I don't know how that happened. A guy as big as Keller running like that. John Taft back in the Marshall lineup, and Mr. Jennings back in for East Tennessee State. Taft to trigger from the baseline. Gets it to Roland. Has it batted away and stolen by the Buccaneers. Ten is Alvin West. Greg Dennis is fouled by Roland as he takes the drive. Omar Roland is not protecting the ball very well on offense. He's had it slapped away several times. Look at that. We have Phillips in. Look at this again, Kenny. Greg Dennis is an inside-outside threat. He moves so well for a big man. Gets the ball on the baseline, fakes, and Roland is just out of position. Dennis drives to the hole. Roland goes for the block, but comes up with a foul. Greg Dennis at the free throw line, and he makes it good. Dennis, a, an 80% free throw shooter. He's only a junior. He's already the third leading scorer in the history of East Tennessee State basketball. But he makes them both. He has six points. And when he finishes his career here, the young man from Charleston will undoubtedly be the Buccaneers' all-time leading scorer. Not too bad for a tall, skinny kid from Charleston, West Virginia, that nobody really wanted out of high school, except for Les Robinson, of course. Pass intended for Phillips, and Cunningham throws it too high and out of bounds. Tyrone Phillips, number 21, a freshman from Los Angeles, California, in the Marshall lineup. Marshall back to the zone now. Heard switching defenses. There's Dennis, and he missed the three-pointer. He's a good three-point shooter. Buccaneers have it. This is Jennings. He pops it up and in. Only five setting. Seven. Keith Jennings from Culpeper, West Virginia. Or Culpeper, Virginia, I stand corrected. Marshall lead is trailing by one now. Buccaneers 24-23. And the scoring pace has slowed somewhat. We've had quite a few turnovers. Uh, air ball thrown up by Scott Williams. I think Mr. Jennings got a piece of that from behind. He bit on the fake but recovered very well. There's Alvin West. He throws up an air ball. It's out of bounds and will belong to the Buccaneers. Scott Williams with a nice fake on Mr. Jennings, but he recovers, slaps the ball from behind, causes the air ball. 7.41 to go in the first half. Timeout on the floor. The Buccaneers leading the Thundering Herd 24-23. Thus far in the game, John Taft with 11 points. Mr. Jennings answering for East Tennessee State with 10. Both clubs started off shooting uh, pretty well, not quite as well as they did up in Huntington uh, three weeks ago, but uh, things have cooled off, and uh, in the last four minutes, uh, the two teams have only scored seven points between them. And that should be to Marshall's advantage in the long run, as uh, you pointed out earlier. Dana Altman wants Omar Rowland involved in the half-court offense. If it gets up in the 80s and 90s, that's not happening. I imagine he's got to be pleased with the tempo of the game right now. Calvin Talker missed the layup. The crowd wanted a goaltend on that one. Scott Williams has it for Marshall. Talford had 27 points against the Thundering Herd up in Huntington. He has scored five thus far tonight. Marshall's not protecting the ball very well, and some of that has to fall on Omar Rowland. The Thundering Herd with eight turnovers thus far. East Tennessee State only three. That's Phillips, and he missed the shot. Underneath the whistle. Mo Sanders grabs the board, but he's fouled on the play. Keller picks up his second personal foul. Keller coming off the bench, probably the best six man in the Southern Conference. <laughs> Buccaneers man for man against the Thundering Herd. It doesn't go to John Taft. It goes off Taft's hands out of bounds. Turnover number nine for the Thundering Herd. When you talk about Chad Keller being a senior, East Tennessee State only has two seniors. This is a talented ball club that is young. Les Robinson's put together a group of juniors, sophomores, that have pretty much had the run of the Southern Conference this year. Thundering Herd still in that zone defense, or again in that zone defense this time down. That's Keller from out front, and he misses a rebound grab by Phillips. 
And John Tapp shoves it up the floor. He's cut off by West. Jennings knocks it away from Scott Williams, but Williams gets it back. Marshall trying to get the ball to Tapp. He is the main man of the Thundering Herd. Mo Sanders. He missed the shot. Rebound Mr. Jennings. by Mr. Jennings at 5-7. He skied for that one. Alvin West missed the three-pointer, and Tapp gets the carry. Neither team shooting very well. Tapp all the way, misses the shot, and he's fouled. That's on Keller. That would be his third. And very quickly, uh, Marty Story is checking back into the lineup for the Buccaneers, and, along with Major Gear. And Keller sets down. That's his third personal foul. Alvin West not shooting very well offensively for the Bucs. Some of that may be related to the good defense he's playing on John Taft. Just look at Taft's drive. Keller just not quite quick enough to stop him. Very few people are. Taft will shoot two from the line. But West is doing an outstanding job on Taft, denying the ball, staying with him. And that may contribute to a poor offensive showing at times. He to catch his breath as he's doing now on the bench. Taft has missed his last two free throws. John's a pretty good free throw shooter, almost 74%, but he gets this one. He's two out of four tonight. There's a good look at that zone defense as Marshall's in the 3-2. Now, the man out front will switch off continually. It won't always be under a Greg Dennis knocks down a three-pointer. Dennis is a 44% free throw, a three-point shooter, and the charging foul's on John Taft. Major Gear stepped up, took the charge. Taft didn't complain much. Looked like a good call. That's the second on John Taft. On the thundering herd, the fifth team foul. This is Greg Dennis, and he pounds down another one. So Dennis now has 11 points, and the Buccaneers have taken the lead at 29-24 very quickly. Five straight points by Dennis. Scott Williams being hounded by Mr. Jenny, but this is Andre Cunningham, the young man from Red Jacket, West Virginia. Major Gear over there guarding, uh, guarding Taft, and he uh, ripped a three-pointer. So John Taft has three three-pointers, two regular field goals, and two free throws. This is Dennis. He goes inside with it. They can't get the shot away, bring it back out. Mr. Jennings in heavy traffic, loses it, gets it back. Jeff Peterson's in the Marshall lineup. Checked in a moment ago. Bucket uh, does not fall, and Phillips gets the rebound for Marshall. John Taft over Major Gear, and it spins out. Phillips rebound. And traveling. traveling calls Ted Valentine, and the bucket will not be allowed. 29 27, a two point lead for the Buccaneers. As you look at part of the huge crowd here at East Tennessee State, biggest crowd ever to watch. Uh, Buccaneer basketball game. Greg Dennis around Phillips and he is fouled. But did you see the spin move? Phillips guarding the baseline and Dennis just so quick down low. Spun loose and was going to go for the hoop. The only way it could be stopped was a foul. Tyrone Phillips. He's a freshman, a true freshman from Los Angeles, California. So Greg Dennis is at the free throw line. Dennis is two for two from the line tonight at 80% free throw shooter. We have 412 left to go in the first half. As a team, East Tennessee State shooting almost 74%. And the starting five shooting much better than that. So it's a four-point lead for the Bucs. 31-27, Bach moving at 4.05. Marshall with the ball, and out of bounds at the feet of Kenny Bass. And he makes a nice save and gets it back to the rim. It will belong to East Tennessee State. Now, Mr. Jennings knocked that ball away from Scott Williams, and apparently Williams got a hand on it, reaching just before it went out of bounds. 12 turnovers now for the Thundering Herd. Still only three for East Tennessee State, of course. 
Mr. Jennings a big part of that. He just doesn't turn the ball over very much and handles it most of the time for the Bucks. Major Gale from outside looks the three-pointer. Eighth in the nation in three-point shooting, and he rocks another one through. The three best three-point shooters in the Southern Conference are all from East Tennessee State. John Taft gets the bucket for the Thunder and Herd, and that tap stems the tie, at least temporarily. 34-29, a five-point East Tennessee State lead. Shot blocked by Tyrone Phillips. Picked up by Talford, and the Buccaneers retain possession. That was a good defensive play by the freshman. Good hands by Andre Cunningham, slapping the ball loose from Keith Jennings. So a Buccaneer turnover. East Tennessee State by five. The Bucs led a moment ago by seven. They just lead by either two here in the first half. Inside, Peterson moves on. Greg Dennison scores. Strong move. Four points for Jeff Peterson in tonight's game. Peterson has played in every game for the Thundering Herd. A lot of valuable playing time this freshman year. Marshall worked on that particular play today in practice with Peterson getting the ball down low and then spinning in the lane. The practice makes perfect. Dennis is hammered. Either Peterson or Phillips, both of them cracking. Roland and Sanders getting ready to check back in for the Thundering Herd. That foul was on Tyrone Phillips, his second. Peterson sits down. Dennis is the kind of guy that frustrates you when you're on defense because he's so fast. If you bite on the fake, he's by and he's so big, you can go to the hoop. So if you get beat, you have a tendency to come down hard on him, and then you send him to the line where he's 8 out of 10 every time. Definitely a force to be reckoned with this young gentleman. A moment ago, a good look at Les Robinson, the head coach of the Buccaneers. And Dennis scans both of them. That gives the Buccaneers a five-point lead again at 36-31. We'll be back in just a moment here at East Tennessee State. East Tennessee State filling it up from outside. They call him the major. Of course, West Virginia fans know of another major, but not here. It's Major Gear. And he launches a trifecta and nails it. From the Southern Conference tonight, well, there's Major Gear at his best three-point shooting day this season when he hit six on January 29th in Huntington against the Thunder Herd. He was incredible. From the Southern Conference, Tennessee Chattanooga has beaten Furman tonight, 70 to 69. That makes the Moccasins six and seven. Furman drops to four and nine in Southern Conference play. Shot is blocked by the Bucs. Dennis is in there and comes out with it. Marshall in the zone. Calvin Tauford. Rebound John Tapp. I think that 3-2 zone has slowed the Bucks down a little bit. It's I, bothering I, them a little bit. I think you're right. Marshall seems to be doing better in that zone. Ball is battered away by West, but picked up by Cunningham. Thundering Herd still in possession. Clock moving with a minute 40 to go in the first half. East Tennessee State by five over the Thundering Herd. Cunningham in some trouble, but he gets it back, takes the shot, misses. Rebound out of there by the Buccaneers. Marty Story got that care of. Three-pointer missed, but Story gets the rebound. Buccaneers still in possession. Alvin West, he misses. Neither team shooting nearly as well tonight as up in Huntington. Wide open shot in the paint. West throws up a brick. There you see the time left in the first half. One minute to go. Sanders in trouble. Out to tap, and Simmons is back in the game. Had to retrieve it through the center line. 24 seconds left on the shot clock. Sanders called for a travel. He put a fake on uh, the uh, Buccaneers' Marty Story and took a step before he bounced the ball. Major Gear back in for the Buccaneers, and Jeff Peterson checks back in for the Thundering Herd. Going to get Omar Rowland out of there so he doesn't pick up a cheap foul right before the half. 
Roland has two, John Tapp has two, and Phillips has two. For the Buccaneers, uh, Jack Keller in the ball game briefly picked up three, and that could be a de determining factor down near the end of the game. They rely quite a bit to the Buccaneers on Keller off the bench. He had nine points, uh, nine rebounds, and ten points off the bench against the Thundering Herd up in Huntington. 22 seconds, 20 seconds now. The shot clock is off. East Tennessee looking for the last shot. Or a gimme. Whichever should come first. Dennis going to take the three-pointer. And he's way off the mark. Ball is out of bounds as the first half comes to an end. So after a fast and furious start, where each team had 20 points in less than the first 10 minutes, we reach halftime with a five-point margin for East Tennessee State. Buccaneers leading Marshall 36-31. We will return to the Mini Dome on the campus of East Tennessee State University in just a moment. Tri-City Opticians. Locally owned and operated Tri-City Opticians. Scott Williams has ignited this run by the Thundering Herb with a couple of long three-pointers. There he cans one from the side. Williams, a 43% three-point shooter. Went through a little dry spell a couple of games ago. Looks like he might have found his touch. He's two for four shooting in the game. The Buccaneers will bring it in. Trailing now by three, and the five-second count. They didn't get it in, and Les Robinson must be wondering what is happening. His ball club has been scored eight, outscored eight to nothing in a minute and 49 seconds. Has gone from five up to three down, and now can't get the ball in bounds. Well, the coaches will tell you the first five minutes of the half, crucial time. Marshall's dominated the first minute and a half of it. Buccaneers man to man defensively. Cunningham cross court to Williams and Scott fires another three-pointer and another one good. So Scott Williams has come out and hit three straight three-pointers to fire the thundering herd. He's such a dangerous shooter when he gets into a zone, like all good shooters, feels like he can't miss. I'm sure he's in that place right now. He's a junior from Marysville, Tennessee. Dennis drives on Roland, misses the shot. Rebound out of there by Cunningham. And now John Chad. Marshall's Mr. Everything, John Tapp. Marshall with a six-point lead. Uh, has outscored the Buccaneers 11 to nothing in the first minute and two minutes and 30 seconds of the second period. Tapp lets it get away, get away but he uh, retrieves it very quickly. They're moving out now on Williams, and Williams pass off the hand of Rollins out of bounds. A turnover for the Thundering Herd. Uh, Chad Keller checks back into the lineup uh, for East Tennessee, and you're looking at Les Robinson, the Buccaneer head coach and athletic director. Played ball at North Carolina State from St. Albans, West Virginia. Inside Keller, guarded by Sanders. Marshall man for man defensively. Calford on the drive, can't get the shot down, but there's a foul, and it's against the Buccaneers. It's a charging violation, and the Thundering Herd has done that. East Tennessee State is a penetrating, slashing team. The Thundering Herd has been taking some charges. First one called by the official. Foul was on Calvin Calford. That's his second. East Tennessee is yet to score here in the second half. Inside, Omar Rowland makes it good. And Marshall has come out red hot. The Buccaneers ice cold. It's 44-36. And it does more than just change the score. It takes this big crowd out of the game. Anytime you have 11,000 plus, that's a lot to deal with. But they're not real loud so far this half. Dennis loses it, gets it back, drives the baseline, and slams it home. So Greg Dennis breaks the uh, scoring drought for the Buccaneers. First points off the second half. Marshall 44, East Tennessee State 38. This is Scott Williams. He lays it up and in. He scoops it in. When you're shooting as well as he is from outside, one step and a lot of defenders will bite. That's what happened to Mr. Jennings. And Williams just blew by him and showed some nice quickness going to the hole. Williams did not score in the first half. He has 11 points in the first four minutes of the second half. Mr. Jennings fires it over to Greg Dennis. Greg Dennis, and he pounds on the three-pointer. So Dennis 
has personally brought the East Tennessee back in to the ball game. Five points down now at 46-41. He has scored all of the Buccaneers points. Bo Sanders around Dennis. Puts it up over Keller. Rolls out. And Keller comes out with the rebound. Uh-oh. Here is Talford. He is fouled by Scott Williams and he makes it good anyway. Well, Scott Williams had very uh, little alternative. He either committed the foul or let him get the basket. However, he committed the foul and did let him get the basket. Both yeah. happened. You have to make a decision early. Scott Williams has to decide right here what he's going to do. He hesitated just a second, but Telford get by him and just wasn't a good foul. There are good fouls to commit. That wasn't one. Scott Williams, Telford blew by him. Couldn't, even, couldn't impede his progress to the basket. Pays the price for the possible three-point play. Telford, a 77% free throw shooter. And Harold Simmons into the Marshall lineup replacing Scott Williams. Williams goes to the bench and is talking to the trainer. May have wrenched his back a little bit. He did look as if he was walking rather gingerly going over there. He's stretching it out on the bench. So now it's a two-point game, 46-44. And Taft been giving fits out there by the Buccaneers. Gets it inside and slammed home by... Mo Sanders called a technical, technical foul on Sanders. Now Sanders is arguing that he was trying to protect himself on the rim. You're allowed to do that if you feel like you're in danger. You are allowed to protect yourself by grabbing hold. Here it is. John Taft shaking and baking out front. He's going to draw a lot of attention. Three guys come out on him. He dishes over to Mo Sanders. Now Sanders goes up and down and he grabs hold. Ooh. Nobody really around him. He may have thought Greg Dennis. It may have been uh, <laughs> the face he was making. He may have said something, a little showboating there. But nevertheless, it is a technical foul. And Greg Dennis makes it good. That's and the judgment. Buccaneers will get it out of bounds. And he gets a two-shot uh, foul, two-shot technical that's foul. It's a judgment call by the official. The official has to rule whether the player was in danger, hanging onto the ball, hanging onto the rim. And Ted Valentine says Mo Sanders just wanted a little extra play out of that dunk. So it's a two-point Marshall margin now, 48-46. The Buccaneers with the ball, down by two. Greg Dennis. So Dennis single-handedly uh, keeping the Buccaneers flying. Back at 48-48 after Marshall had led by a score of uh, 44-36. This is Aaron Simmons. He misses the shot. Roland. John Taft, it won't fall. Here's Sanders, he puts it up, it won't go, and we have a whistle. A lot of action in there. Dane Altman wants a call underneath. He felt like Greg Dennis fouled Omar Rowland. Well, the crowd felt like Omar Rowland shoved off at one point and elbowed Dennis. Right after the alleged violation on Dennis, at least Altman is alleging a violation. There's uh, the first year Marshall coach. We're seated in front of the East Tennessee State student section. The last time we did a game, we were right in front of the Keyheads over at BMI. There's Les Robinson. Shows how popular we are, Bob. We get the best seats in the house. Mo Sanders makes it 49-48 as he hits one out of two from the charity strike. Quick thinking there by Michael Woods, who's back in the game. He retrieved that ball and Aaron pass. This is Dennis. He feeds off to Keller. Yeah. Keller puts the shot up and won't go. And Dennis slams it through. Greg Dennis, a one-man wrecking crew for the Buccaneers in the second half. And East Tennessee State has regained the lead at 50 to 49. Keller with a rebound. Taken away by John Taft, and Taft gives Marshall a one-point lead. The Thundering Herd is not doing much with Greg Dennis. He's controlling the game. He's grabbed it by the throat at this point. A three. He misses it. And Sanders throws out Paul Marshall. Looks like Dennis is doing what he wants to do. Going underneath, going outside. Inside, Omar Roller moves against Dennis, and he misses the shot badly. Ball is saved from going out of bounds, grabbed by Talford, and the Buccaneers down by uh, one in possession. All the way, that's Michael Woods, and the shot belongs to the Thundering Herd. 
13-18 to go in the game. Marshall on top by one, 51-50. Omar Rowland, another block shot that draws him ever closer to the Southern Conference season record and the Thundering Herd career record. George Singleton of Furman had 93 in one season about 10 years ago. Well, Brett Dennis has put the crowd back into the game. Andre Cunningham rolls it in for Marshall. That's only the fourth point tonight for Andre, averaging 14, and Marshall's on top by three. Should the Buccaneers win, they're the regular season champions and the regular, uh, the number one seed in the postseason tournament. Cunningham indicated earlier this week he'd like a shot at guarding Mr. Jennings. That's exactly what's happening. Andre Cunningham has drawn Mr. Jennings man to man, trying to shut down that penetrating, slashing guard. Harold Simmons rebounded that missed Greg Dennis shot. Dennis had some difficulty getting the ball to go down in the first half, but not here in the second. John Taft throws one up real weakly, grabbed by Rowland. Showing it's paying attention. There is Harold Simmons missing the shot. Keller rebounds. John Taft was saying something to referee Ted Valentine. I think he felt as if he were, were fouled on that shot. On the line, Calvin Talford stepped on the baseline and it's out of bounds to the Thundering Herd. 11.59 to go in the ball game. Marshall on top, 53-50. We'll be back here at East Tennessee State University in just a moment. Here's a look at an East Tennessee State turnover. Chad Keller makes a big mistake. He's 6'8", but when Keller brings the ball down to his waist, that allows a 6'1 player like John Taft to grab it, steal it away, and put it in for a thundering herd basket. Keller needs to protect the basketball, keep it up about neck high, chest high, use that size advantage he's got over other members of the thundering herd. Marshall brings it in play. Scott Williams, who had the hot hand in the early going of this half, back in the Marshall lineup. Marshall 9-14 from the floor this second half, 64%. John Taft takes it in and missed the shot, but we have a whistle. And the foul is on Keller, I believe. If so, Chad has picked up four. Got him on the elbow, says Ted Valentine. It's on number 32, however. That is Michael Woods, and that's his first. Well, John Taft up the line. Taft two out of four in the first half. Makes this one good. Marshall 54-50 right now. Four-point lead. The herd trailed by five at halftime, and they quickly led by eight. East Tennessee regained the lead, and Marshall's back on top. A seesaw game, 55-50, a five-point Marshall margin. Anthony Beagle, number 24, in the Marshall lineup. High post, Dennis is double team. That's Talford, and he throws it up short. The ball is out of bounds, belonging now to Marshall. And East Tennessee, who was just devastating for three-point range, first time these two clubs met, uh, missing uh, a lot of shots tonight that the Buccaneers usually make. Some nights, it's not your night, but maybe this is the reason. Marshall's scoring defense, it leads the Southern Conference in only 72 and a half points a game. Of course, East Tennessee State lit the herd up with 99 points the first time the teams met. Is it Dane Altman's strategy? Is it bad shooting? Probably a combination of both. You're probably right. John Taft over Major Gear. Peterson had it, he's back in the game, and Mr. Jennings took it away from him. He did what Geller did, brought the ball down where Keith could get a hold of it. When Geller misses an easy pass, out of bounds, Buccaneers will maintain possession. When you are six foot 11, there's no way, except on a dribble, that a 5'7 guy should be able to steal the ball. Of course, the other side of the coin, East Tennessee State scoring offense, 89 points a game. That leads the Southern Conference. They're not on the pace to match that average tonight. That's Major Gear knocking down the three-pointer. So we mentioned East Tennessee not hitting the three-pointers as they uh, are accustomed to doing, and Major Gear pounds one home. Well, he's eighth in the country, so it's no surprise he would hit a three. Offensive foul, a five-second call, says Ted Valentine. Good defense for John Taft that time. Another turnover for the Buccaneers. In the first half, 
East Tennessee State turned the ball over, over only four times. Marshall 14. Now Omar Rowland checks back in for Marshall, replacing Peterson. Peterson's only a freshman. He's from up in Mecklen, uh, Wisconsin. Rowland the senior. Marshall man for man defensively right now. And Mr. Jennings goes all the way in and missed the layup. A good move. He just couldn't get the shot to fall. John Taft in possession. Inside Sanders. Williams for a three-pointer, and he pounds another one home. Now, Williams has hit four three-pointers in the second half. He has 14 points all in the second half. Underneath, Keller missed the layup or the uh, slam, but he was fouled by Williams. He missed the jam, but Scott Williams had a hand in there and called for a personal foul, his second. Williams only took two shots in the first half. He missed them both. It's been red hot in the second half. Chad Keller works free of Omar Rowland. Scott Williams coming in, helping on defense, just not there in time. And I would say <laughs> that was a good call. <laughs> Scott <laughs> yeah, it looks really threw the hammer in on that one. Keller makes it good. And Keller, a valuable six-man off the bench, averaging eight and a half points a game, but this is his first point off tonight. He was in foul trouble in the first half, misses this one, and Williams gets the rebound. Anthony Biggle. Sanders has come out front. Go inside to Roland, back out. Biggle goes to Sanders. He doesn't take the shot. Dana Holman has the ball in the lead. He's content to work that shot clock down a little bit. Giving John Taft the play. He hasn't had his hands on it this time down. And no, Sanders cannot get it to roll in. Out of bounds, it will belong to the Thundering Herd. Taft did not have his hands on the ball, and usually Marshall likes to get it to him. Maybe John just taking a breather. Marshall's really protecting the ball much better this half. 14 turnovers in the first half, only two for the Thundering Herd. However, East Tennessee State's committed as many this half as they did the entire first half. And the dust pass the midway point. 9.20 to go in the half. Inside, Roland, cut off by Keller. Shoots over it and makes it good. Omar Roland. He now has eight points in the game. And Marshall leads by six at 60 to 54 with 9-10 to go in the game. Bucket good by Chad Keller. Nice turnaround move. Keller's first field goal of the night. This is Sanders out front. Go into Roland, and he's fouled by Brett Dennis. And for Dennis, that's his first personal foul. is the fourth team foul against the Buccaneers. Andre Cunningham back into the Marshall lineup as Omar Rowland goes to the free throw line. For a big man, Greg Dennis is extremely judicious about how he deals out his fouls. He's only fouled out twice this year. And for a guy 6'11", he plays very smart around the basket. Rowland makes it good. Here he had no choice. Of course, Dennis going for the block. At 6'11", he gets a lot of those. However, Omar Rowland is equal in size. As Dennis commits the foul. Andre Cunningham gets the rebound, but he can't control it. It goes out of bounds, and the Buccaneers will have possession. Marshall 15 and 10 on the season. The Buccaneers 22 and 6. Among those 22 victories, a win over North Carolina State at Raleigh, a win over the Tennessee Volunteers at Knoxville. Here's Dennis. He traveled. He took one fake too many. That was good defense by Omar Rowan. The first big step is where Dennis has been beating Marshall's defenders. Rowan stayed with him, didn't fight on the fake. Dennis commits the turnover. Anthony Bingle brings it back out front to Tab. Taft being guarded by Major Gear. John's been rather quiet this half. He had 17 the first half, feeds it off. An offensive foul on Taft. John Taft on the drive, fed off to, I think, Roland or Bigel underneath, but he was called for an offensive foul. Dana Altman telling John Taft to shoot the basketball in that position. Good advice. There you see it again. 
He fed it off to Biggle and crashed right into Greg Dennis. Fed Good it off. defense by Dennis. <laughs> Jennings takes it all the way in and misses the shot. The ball is out of bounds. Touch last by Beagle. It will remain in possession of the Buccaneers. We have a timeout on the floor with 7.58 to go in the game. Marshall 61, East Tennessee State 56. We shall return. Scott Williams 0 for 1 in the first half, three-point shooting, but oh, what an intermission can do for you. Four for four from beyond the 19-9 line in the second half. And Williams, scoreless in that first half, has 14 points in the second half. Good coaching by the Marshall staff in the dressing room, right? <laughs> East Tennessee with the ball. The Buccaneers trail. <laughs> Loose on the floor. John Tatt comes out of there with it. So East Tennessee fails on another scoring opportunity. The Buccaneers not shooting the ball well at all tonight. And of course, as uh, Kenny pointed out earlier, Marshall with the best defense in the league. The three-pointer missed by Biggle. I'm not sure that uh, Dana Altman wanted Biggle taking those big, long bombs. You're going to shoot from out there, let Scott Williams do it. Yeah, you want it in the hand to one, two, if you're shooting a three-pointer. Major Gear misses. Omar rolling rebounds. And the Buccaneers cannot get the ball down. 61-56, a five-point Marshall lead. Good coaching strategy, making John Taft work the entire length of the floor. Of course, the, the, the strategy, tire him out. So late in the game, he won't be quite as effective. That's Taft in the corner, being guarded by Major Gear. He's done a good job on John this second half. Inside Roland over Dennis, but traveling is called. Omar Roland took a step before he put the ball on the floor, and it goes over to the Buccaneers. Now the crowd beginning to show some life. This crowd has been very quiet in the second half. Marshall's uh, surge at the beginning of the half really took the crowd out of the game. Keller makes the bucket. Two in a row, same play. Chad Keller posting up down low, getting the ball, hitting a nice turnaround jumper. Marshall leads by three. Clock moving, 6.20 to go in the game. John Tapp goes all the way inside, draws the personal foul. And immediately the crowd is taken out of it, and that helps the hurt. That's on Greg Dennis, his second. John Zapp standing up there is 11th on the all-time Marshall scoring list. He's only a junior. Coming into tonight's game, 1,488 points. Next in line, Tom Curry, who had 1,535. And Taft just got his average, his 23rd point on the night. He now has 23, or 24. And we have a timeout called on the floor. There's 6.21 to go in the game. Marshall 63, East Tennessee State 58. And we'll be back here at the Mini Dome in Johnson City. The East Tennessee State Buccaneers unbeaten at home this season. Trails the Marshall Thundering Herd by five. 63-58 with 6.20 to go. Not only unbeaten, Bob, but no team has come within 10 points of the Buccaneers in the Dome of Doom thus far in Johnson City this season. An unaccustomed position for Les Robinson's squad, trailing this late in the ballgame. We've been saying that this is the largest crowd ever to watch a basketball game here at East Tennessee State. We now are informed well, we were this close. is the second largest crowd ever. John they Taft. don't say when the uh, biggest occurred, the biggest crowd. I believe it was against uh, Appalachian State just last week. If you say so, I'm with you. There's Chad Keller, and he makes another one good. So Keller, who was really nullified in the first half, taken out of the game by personal fouls, had second, seven points in the second half. John Taft, who has 24 points. This is Scott Williams, who tries to feed it off and gets away from him, and Mr. Jennings comes up with it. He loses it out of bounds, but touch last by the thundering herd. Chad Keller has hit three shots in a row from the floor. Very effective this half. A very, very valuable outset to this ball club coming off the bench. Keller is the leading rebounder on this team. 
This is Dennis. Over Roland. He makes it good. Greg Dennis. Dennis has 28 points. It's a one-point game now. Four straight points after that timeout by the Buccaneers. Crowd really getting into it now. Omar Roland had a little difficulty. Brings it out front. And Williams almost loses it. Scott throws it away. And it belongs to Ohio, or rather to uh, East Tennessee as it went off uh, the hands of Major Gear over there. Williams threw the ball and uh, the... I think it was Taft for whom it was intended both the wrong way or both just as he threw it. And Williams found himself uh, in a very indelicate situation. But luckily for Williams, it went off the hand of Major Gill. Marshall retains possession. Now only 10 seconds left on the shot clock. As John Taft spins inside and missed the shot. Roland, he missed it. Los Sanders, Los Sanders he missed it. Uh, Marshall had three good chances to not get it to go down, and now the Buccaneers can regain the lead. Major Gear made the bucket, and the foul is on the thundering herd. They're not going to allow it, are they? No, no basket. basket. No basket. Ed Chambers says it's on the floor. Scott Williams right there. That's the foul. And this isn't the NBA. No continuation on the play. So it'll be out of bounds to East Tennessee State. That's only the 14th foul on Marshall in the second half. Major Gear makes it good this time. So Major Gear gives the Buccaneers the lead at 64-63. Dana Altman choosing not to call a timeout, instead running the offense. East Tennessee has taken the lead back, having not scored Marshall 10-3 over the past couple of minutes. With the ball is Major Gear and the Buccaneers. Now, in control of the ball, one point lead, the crowd back in the game. At least a part of it directly behind us is back into the game. Alfred, number 24, looks inside and goes to Greg Dennis. Dennis loses it and he's fouled by Sanders. Sanders. Maurice Sanders puts up his second personal. Here it is, Greg Dennis posting up, Omar Rowan's behind him, he's gonna go for the block on the turnaround, Mo Sanders comes over to help, gets him on the arm. I have Dennis for 30 points, that's unofficial. Greg Dennis, the junior from Charleston, West Virginia, having a splendid outing. And I know his mother and dad back in Charleston, watching with great delight, he's been perfect from the free throw line. Nine out of nine. He's just taken over in the second half. When the Buccaneers weren't hitting anything, he grabbed the ball. He wanted it, called for it, took it to the hole, and rammed it through. He hit outside, inside, played great defense. He's been the force in the second half. Marshall scored the first 13 points of the second half to take an eight-point lead, and then Dennis put East Tennessee right back in it. There's John Taft, and Taft, who has been quiet this second half, drills a three-pointer. So we're tied at 66 with 3.33 to go in the game. 27 on the night for John Tab. They try the alley hoop and Talford cannot get it to go down. Dennis saves it on a fine play into Mr. Jennings. This is Major Gear and he missed the shot. McKellar rebounds and he's fouled. Now, Greg Dennis just showing magnificent hustle there and great court awareness. He didn't just throw that ball anywhere he knew mr jennings was there and flipped it right to it he's doing it all for him here's the play <laughs> gear drives in it won't go to chad keller in the right place at the right time picks up the garbage tries to put it back up scott williams fouls him saves a certain basket keller will shoot too bob this is the game that dana altman wanted he wanted a game close he wanted a game in the 60s and 70s thus far it's gone perfect to script for the thundering herd Keller, a 75% free throw shooter, missed the first one. We're at 315, the game tied, and he missed the second. Uncharacteristic of the Buccaneer ball club. Scott Williams will bring it up to court, give John Taft a little break. Williams behind his back, loses his dribble, goes on the floor. It will belong to Marshall on the alternate possession. 
So Marshall retains possession. That is tough when you're dealing with Mr. Jennings. Oh, he's about he's, at the ball. You know, he's only five, at the seven. ball. He's just the perfect height. He's the perfect height to make a steal. And quick. Very quick feet, very quick hand. This is Taft. Talford's guarding him now and cuts him off. Physical defense by Calvin Talford. Well, earlier it was Major Gear. Now they're giving Gear a break, putting a fresh man on Taft and Talford. They lob it inside and then back out. This is Scott Williams. This is off the mark. The rebound, John Taft. He's tied for that and scores. John Taft with a magnificent effort for the Thundering Herd. He's keeping Marshall in the game. Thundering Herd on top, 68-66. I think probably, undoubtedly, the two best players in the Southern Conference, Taft and Greg Dennis. I'm sure some people in Citadel would give me an argument on Patrick Elmore. He can score, but I don't know if he can do it all like these two guys can do. Well, the Twins at BMI, and that uh, team will be in here to play East Tennessee State on Monday night. I guess that was a pass. I'm sure it was. <laughs> When you're, third in the nation, pops it <laughs> when you're third in the nation in assists, everything is a pass. I really thought he shot the ball, but it was so far off, he must have passed it. I'm sure he'll get an assist in the official statistics tonight. Game tied at 68 with a minute 52 remaining. You see the time in the game down at the right of your screen. And John Taft in possession for Marshall. Taft spins, misses the shot, but he's fouled. That's on Calford with a minute 40 to go here in the ball game. You're looking at Dana Altman. Both coaches have done an outstanding job on the sidelines. Les Robinson putting fresh men on John Taft. It's been Calford, West, Major Gear. Taft, of course, had to deal with all three of those guys, but he still scored 29 points. 30 so points. John Taft gives Marshall a lead of one. There you're looking at Les Robinson. Well, he has not lost a game here at home this season. Not, no one's come within 10 points of him here. Isn't that not right? This, yeah, that is correct. That is correct. East Tennessee State been dominant at home. What makes Taft's performance so much more impressive, when you look at the season average, obviously, 23 points a game. He's, he's way above that with 31, but he's even scoring more than since he's returned from that injury. Averaging 28 a game, he's got 31 tonight. And Keller ties it up with a minute 25 to go. Nine points this half for... The senior from Lenore, North Carolina, Chad Keller. Not a factor in the first half, but definitely here in the second stanza. Marshall looking for the good shot, and Omar Rowland from 20 feet is not it. Looking now for they John Taft. Still 24 seconds on the shot clock. That is not a factor at this point. As we go inside the middle mark, tied at 70. Altman wants an opportunity to win. That's John who he wants Taft, Mystic gets his own rebound. Off the glass, good, and he is fouled. Possible three-point play. Quite a competitor, this youngster from Huntsville, Alabama. Player of the year as a sophomore last year in the Southern Conference. Omar Rowland had an opportunity to drive to the hole when he was standing about 17 feet out. That's not a bad, bad shot. Early in the game, you'll see him do that. But John Taft is the one Dana Altman wants to have the ball late. Taft's incredible. He follows his shot, which is what every coach will tell you you need to do. He goes inside, gets it off of the glass, has a chance to put the herd up by three. I mean, everybody in the building knows he's going to get the ball. That's what makes him so good. And you know Dennis is going to be tough on one end. You know Taft's going to get it on the other. I have Taft right now for 32 points. 30, yep, 32, 33 points, somewhere in that neighborhood. And that fouled Talford out of the game, I believe. He's over on the bench. Five personal fouls on Calvin Talford. He had 27 points in the first game and scored eight here tonight. We have a timeout on the floor. 48 seconds remaining in the game. Marshall up by two. When we return, John Taft will be at the free throw line. It's been Taft and Dennis, Taft and Dennis and Taft. 33 points for John Taft. 32 points for Greg Dennis. They've been incredible. So John Taft with the free throw opportunity for the Thundering Herd. 48 seconds remaining. Oh, he missed it. 
The rebound is loose and grabbed by Alvin Welsh. East Tennessee State with the ball trailing by two, and you see the tie. That is a big miss, the way these guys can shoot three points. There's a one-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Greg Dennis backing in. Brought it up short. Keller rebound, and he is fouled by Maurice Sanders. And Chad Keller, with excellent positioning in there, got the Kara. Just a few short moments ago, though, he was at the free throw line and missed two. Here he goes again. There's a look at it. Keller grabbing the ball. Mo Sanders fighting for it. It's a reaching foul. 28 seconds remaining in the game. Timeout. Keller, a 75% free throw shooter and free throw shooter. And Dana Altman calls timeout and will return with Chad Keller at the free throw line. The Buccaneers trailing by two. East Tennessee State led by four at halftime. Marshall roared out in the second half with Scott Williams leading the way, scored 13 straight points to take the lead. Greg Dennis then brought East Tennessee State back, and since then it's been Dennis and John Taft battling out back and forth. And now it is Chad Keller, who has uh, been a contributing factor late in the game, making the free throw that draws his team to within one. And we're tied. Time out. At 72, still 28 seconds to go as we have another timeout call. Full court press being employed by the Buccaneers. Ed Chambers will hand the ball to Mo Sanders, and we will be off in the final 28 seconds. Here we go. It comes to John Taft. He's been guarded now by Alvin West. Six Talford fouled out. Scott Williams lost it out of bounds. So Marshall commits a turnover with 16 seconds remaining. The ball hit on the out-of-bounds line. Here's a look at it. Here's a look at it. Bad call. The ball did yes, not hit. It did not hit, hit on the out-of-bounds line, did it? No, it did not. That's but a the bad official call. Line is that uh, was right there, and he made the call. Bad we ought call. to look at that again. And that's. It did not look from the replay as if it did hit on the out-of-bounds line. Now the Buccaneers have eight seconds. Major Gear missed it. John Taft rebound. And we will go into overtime. Tied at 72-72. We're the team able to uh, capitalize in the final 28 seconds. Each had a chance. We are sitting opposite of that camera angle that you saw on the turnover by I, but, Mark, I think uh, that was, was a, we were blocked out our camera was I think blocked that was out. a case of anticipation it looked like the ball was going out of bounds didn't look like Scott Williams was going to get to it the ball clearly inbounds uh, official just blew the call and we go into overtime we'll throw it up again Ted Valentine the official there says that was not a good toss that was not a good tap we'll do it one more time that's why we have the alternate possession rule in college basketball <laughs> not many officials able to throw it up when those seven foot guys go jumping that's at true it. back when I played uh, many 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 years ago <laughs> uh, we weren't any bigger than the officials they didn't have so far to throw it don't see many seven foot officials running up and down the court we're in overtime, tied at 72-72 here in the Mini Dome in East Tennessee. The Buccaneers and the Thundering Herd, the numbers one and two teams in the Southern Conference. This is Greg Dennis. He missed the shot. There's Keller with the rebound, blocked by Roland, grabbed by Jennings, and his shot is good. Mr. Jennings. That is his first basket since the first half of the game. They have shut him down uh, remarkably well, but he does the Marshall more, defenders. He does more than just score. Oh, yes, 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 certainly. But he is averaging 14 and a half a ball game. In a case like tonight, it's Greg Dennis's night. And Mr. Jennings has just gotten into the ball a lot. Buccaneers lead by two. We played one minute on the overtime. Now, there's something rolling on the floor, either a marble or a coin. And the officials don't see it. Tap goes to Cunningham, and Andre makes the bucket. I think it rolled across and, and off, off the floor. Yes. Just from the angle of which we're sitting, I don't know from whence it came, but uh, that's a bad, bad deal. Game tied at 74. Three and a half minutes to go in the OT. I could not tell if that was a coin or if it looked almost like a marble rolling over there. 
Jennings. Uh, he's off the teller. Great, great assist by Jennings. That was so smooth, driving the lane, the fake, and Omar Roland took it up in the air. If Keith Jennings gets you up in the air, it's over. Just count it. Now watch this. The pass over to Jennings. We say he's not scoring a whole lot in the second half. Watch this. The fake. Omar Rollins up. Good night. Three-point play possible for Chad Buccaneers Keller. leading now 76-74. We missed the free throw and the rebound. Battle for Sanders has it for Marshall. Chad Keller, 14 points all in the second half. He didn't see a lot of playing time in that first half. He was beset by personal fouls from almost the instant he got into the game. Two point, East Tennessee State lead. Duncan Hurd with the ball. Roland has come out. Like Marshall looking running. for the good shot, trying to get somebody wide open. Duncan Hurd's running it. Looks like a double post offense with Roland up top and Mo Sanders down low. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Scott Williams speeds underneath the Cunningham and Andre missed the layup. And the rebound, Greg Dennis. And he is put down by Cunningham. I don't think that was intentional. No, they got tangled up. Cunningham fouls him. An unfortunate incident for Cunningham, but fortuitous for Greg Dennis. He'll go to the line and shoot two. Two one West, one. West Virginia boys. Greg Dennis from Charleston. Here it is. Look at tangled up underneath. Cunningham misses it. Now watch the leg. Cunningham goes for it, and they just get tangled up, and down goes Greg Dennis. He hit pretty hard. Dennis from Charleston, West Virginia, from Red Jacket. Andre Cunningham went to school at Maitland High School. He's nine for nine from the free throw line. Tough to get much better than that. So it's 77-74, East Tennessee with a three-point lead. And there's two and a half minutes remaining in the overtime. 33 points, Greg Dennis. 34 points, Greg Dennis. A four-point Buccaneer lead now. Tap with the ball, being guarded by Alvin West. Cunningham passes in to Sanders and right through his hands, picked up by Keller and Mr. Jennings in possession. We have 2.05 to go, or 2.07 to go in the game. The overtime, East Tennessee, looking to wrap up the Southern Conference regular season championship and the number one seed in next week's tournament in Nashville, North Carolina. Well, the Buccaneer games from the tournament will be seen here on WJL8. Underneath, the shot is missed, but a foul. And all the Marshall games will be seen in the Tri-State area on WSAZ Television 3. Scott Williams has just fouled out of the ball game. Williams gets beat to the bucket, goes straight up, Ed Chambers says he impeded progress to the basket. Scott Williams goes to the bench. Scott Williams finishes with 14 points, and he got him in a hurry early in the second half. He did not score in the first half and then rifled in four three-pointers and one regular two-point field goal early in the second half. Got Marshall the lead, but the Thundering Herd has been unable to hold it against the very tough. Buccaneer ball club. They trail now. Does Marshall four points with a minute 47 to go in the overtime, and Alvin West will be up the line for the first time tonight, trying a free throw. West, the 72 percent free throw shooter, the senior from Maryville, Tennessee, Scott Williams. That's West's first point of the night. He averages about seven and a half. So in the overtime period, the Buccaneers have taken charge. They lead 80 to 74. Timeout called on the floor. And we have a minute 47 to go when we return to the mini dome at East Tennessee State. The Buccaneers with a lead of 80 to 74 with a minute 47 to go here in the overtime period. Finished regulation tied at 72, and East Tennessee State is taking the man in the OT. Marshall with the ball. Buccaneers applying uh, pressure in the backcourt. A little harassment. Marshall's been in three overtime games this year. Only won one of them. The game here on WSAZ against UT Chattanooga. 
One tap, missed the three-pointer, and the Bucks get the rebound. So East Tennessee with the ball and an eight, or a six-point lead. That was Michael Woods rebounded that. Mr. Jennings has it. Buccaneers will be content to run some clock. And Anthony Beagle, who's in the game, again for Marshall, committed that foul. So this is about all Marshall can do is foul, hope they missed the front end of one and one, and not let them run the clock completely out. And it's not something that happens very often with East Tennessee State, a team that shoots very well from the free throw line. Putting the Buccaneers on the line, of course, the only thing Marshall can do. West misses and Roland rebounds, and that's what Marshall needed. Exactly. John Taft missed the three-pointer the last time down. He'll take another one, but this one will not go. Rebound is grabbed by the smallest man on the floor, Mr. Jennings. So Marshall has had two shots at it, missed both of them, and the Buccaneers with the ball back, and you see the clock has just gone under the one-minute mark. It's unfortunate for Dana Altman that Scott Williams is on the bench, that he gives him two outstanding three-point shooters with Taft and Williams, but Williams, of course, has fouled out. Andre Cunningham committed that personal foul. The Buccaneers looking for the regular season championship. Marshall has played the East Tennessee State tougher here in the Mini Dome than any team this season. As Kenny pointed out earlier, nobody has come within 10 points of East Tennessee State. And again, missed the front end of one and one. Rowley gets the rebound, and again, Marshall has a shot at it. A three-pointer, get him back. Taft gets in too close, but Andre Cunningham throws it up, and it's no good. So Marshall has missed three down. Here comes Great Dennis. Great Dennis. And the Buccaneers have wrapped this one up, Grant, uh, barring divine intervention. That's an exclamation point bucket for Greg Dennis. He's been outstanding. John Taft misses another three-pointer. Roland has the ball intercepted by West, and he gives it off to Jennings. You see the clock. It's running out. East Tennessee with an eight-point lead. And uh, the Southern Conference regular season championship. Les Robinson on the far side being congratulated by his players, his coaches, and the fans. It's over. Chad Keller matches it home. Ten points. And Bob, still no team has come within ten points of the Buccaneers at home. 84-74, a victory for East Tennessee State and the Buccaneers in overtime have beaten the Marshall Thundering Herd and clinched the regular season Southern Conference Championship. It was an outstanding ball game like the one up in Huntington. It was close for a long, long time, but in the end, East Tennessee State prevailed. This time, they had to go into overtime to the Buccaneers. This was not a 10-point basketball game. It was close all the way. East Tennessee State outstanding quickness. That proved to be the difference in the end. Greg Dennis, an incredible performance for the Buccaneers. This is Bob Bowen along with Kenny Bass for our entire staff. Wishing you a very pleasant good evening. The final score, East Tennessee.